three episodes in, we're already dipping into the fruity drinks. Uh, yeah, it's that kind of day. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guys. Hey guys, this is my review for episode 3 of Supernatural Season 6, The Third Man. And I actually kind of like this episode, despite the fact that it's still quite disorganized in terms of what the overall direction of the season is. This episode finds Sam and Dean finally working together as one. Dean has gone off from Lisa and Ben. They're waiting for him to come back in some foolhardy writing there. Out for a walk, bitch. And then in this episode, we actually change the perspective almost completely. Instead of focusing on the monsters, or this whole monster hunt thing that was the first two episodes, this one deals with the plagues of Moses. Yeah, it's a bit of a leap. It actually does set up a side storyline that possibly you're a little bit more interested in. Castiel finally returns after seeing a gentleman fall apart into a literal splitting of blood on the floor while another guy dies by having boils completely absorb his body and then another dude scratches his head so much that locusts come out of it all of it connected to kind of this really flimsy revenge of these cops framing this kid who they killed thinking about it now how nonchalantly they throw that in is like whoa but that does equate again to the comment i made about how this episode is very disorganized is you've got like six different plot points going on in this episode before things really start to kind of forge down to the narrow at the end of the episode with Castiel meeting up with his old buddy Balthazar who has apparently stolen a lot of these weapons from heaven once the civil war started and then Raphael making an appearance with him almost killing Castiel to have Balthazar turn him into salt and on top of all of that Dean is noticing Sam's lacking humanity when he full-on willingly lets Castiel sort of torture a kid to eventually find out where this soul pack that was made, which by the way, the kid sold his soul to Balthazar as well. There's so much bloody happening in this episode that I could forgive you to forget that there's actually probably one of the most dangerous and probably one of the coolest stunts Supernatural ever did. Castiel's fighting with this angel and they full-on triple indie out of the what looks like the fifth floor in a building in Vancouver. And what's so strange is it's really hard to find any clip about this. I found this really bad promo, which is terrible. Apologies for the quality, but this is the best I could find of anything. I couldn't find stills about it. I couldn't find photos about it. On top of all of that, there's actually a lot of effort done behind the camera there's a lot more varying camera angles that we're used to we're seeing the cool tricks with Castiel moving about and this is an episode directed by Robert Singer when he still had the want to do anything besides standard blocking and that's something that I'm actually kind of curious as to see when that starts to transition over if there's anything that's going to keep me watching the show besides the boys and the humor and everything about that it's also just seeing how the camera work was done in these five seasons because I actually don't really know what was done, wh whether they started to go over to that lazy kind of side. Maybe that was actually what kept me going aside from just watching Supernatural for the sake of watching Supernatural. So yeah, there's a lot of good in this episode. There's a lot of disorganized bad. There's a lot of what on earth is actually happening. The episode ends with the boys being just as confused about Castiel's intentions as we are about the intentions of this season. The third man has some cool fights. It has some cool moments. I really like the introduction of Balthazar. He's going to become a kind of a key character in this season and he's definitely going to be kind of a side replacement for Gabriel. I also kept on thinking this was Gordon Ramsay's brother or something because he does have a bit of similarities. But overall the third man is fun, disorganized, but it does have good intentions and it does set up a storyline with the whole civil war between the angels that you actually are far more interested in to an extent than other stuff. But the direction of season six is still in the cosmos. It's still trying to be found. Somewhere out there. And hopefully as we continue on, that maybe starts to kind of pick up a little bit. But in the end, I'm gonna give the third man a four out of seven. I thought it would have been funny to give it a three, but I'm not gonna go there. It's got a fantastic stunt sequence. It's got some cool moments here and there, but it jumps from event to event so quickly that whatever happened three moments ago doesn't matter at the point of when it gets to like the fifth thing in the 10 line of things that happened in this episode. But I asked you guys for your comments about this episode, so let's read those off. This episode has a really good use of Castiel. He just blips around and is slightly colder to the boys in the last season. I think that works better than him just coming to them at every call. Balthazar is an interesting character that I wish stayed longer, 
but he does do a lot of stealing the scene with Heaven's weapons and whatnot. It's a cool idea, even though it's barely mentioned. Sam and Dean are actually quite dismissive of him, of his whole civil war in Heaven, which is really actually kind of dumb, because you would think that they would be all hands on deck, because Raphael wants to, you know, restart the apocalypse. Overall, solid episode 5 out of 7. Yeah, I do find that they are quite dismissive about the fact that there is a literal apocalypse restart party trying to happen, and they don't do anything about it. They're, they're very, very selfish. Probably one of the harder seasons to watch, especially for, for fans of Dean, because he's just such a selfish prick. The start of Solus Sam was a lot of fun, but Dean should have caught on very quickly that Sam was not Sam. When Sam was totally okay with the whole cast hurting the kid in this, uh, in this soul thing, Dean should have been like, nope, that's not my brother. To be fair, he did come back from the cage, and that would change a person. Cough, cough, Adam, cough, cough. Castiel got his own show to handle with the whole heavenly business. Raphael was underused, and he is also an archangel, but this episode to bring us Balthazar. The Civil War pretty much happened entirely off camera, and even if it had been the focus of the season, there was really nothing that Sam and Dean could have done about it. And to be honest, sure, but as we'll see as the show goes on, maybe, but I do find it quite strange that there is this entire Civil War element that they don't even talk about, and it's like I've said before, I think they just did not have any idea what they were doing. The one thing I absolutely love about this episode is Balthazar. I absolutely loved him. He reminds me a little bit of Gabriel, Sebastian, did a great job playing him. He was so right. Castiel still had to stick up his butt. I'm glad he decided to help Castiel deal with Raphael. He's one of my favorite angels on the show right next to Castiel. Sucks that he only had run one season though. Yeah, I'm actually always surprised that he is only in one season. For some reason thought he was in season seven, but as we'll find out, that's not the case. The Third Man, one of the better episodes this season and the introduction of Balthazar. Possibly one of the best angels in the entire series. He's like an angel version of Crowley. Out of all the characters they brought back in the latter seasons, why not this guy? I'll be honest, I don't know either. Like, sure, everyone dies and then just comes back, but maybe they couldn't get the actor back, but I really did like him. I, I was kind of hoping that Balthazar would stick around. The third man once again proves that the show continues onward with unique ideas, and also the camera work is really fun upon rewatch. Balthazar always felt like a mix between Gabriel and Bella Talbot, but still it is nice to see an angel that isn't robotic, as they often are in Supernatural. Hearing cast say there is no other way really harkens back to Zachariah, saying that there is no other way to stop Lucifer, and you can see Castiel reverts into his soldier mentality. The angelic Civil War makes perfect sense after season five's ending. Overall, it's an entertaining episode with some sp great special effects and another piece of the puzzle and the narrative mystery element this season is slowly built, putting together. Definitely agree with you that they're putting pieces together, but I don't think they're matching. The beginning is something of that of children trying to smash pieces together. I've always preferred episodes that address the larger arcs in the bigger picture. Supernatural inched towards the apocalypse, revealing a deeper, darker, looming evil that revealed itself by the close of season one. The first two episodes of season six focus on the vengeful gens and the shape-shifting baby seems so relevantly insignificant, and yet clearly something was going on. Boom, along comes the third man with post-apocalyptic war in heaven and Sam's obvious and disturbing lack of morality. I love the way this season reveals and develops the bigger problem. Additionally, Balthazar and Raphael are brilliant characters. I wouldn't say Raphael's really a good character. I like the guy who plays him. I find that Raphael is just so monotonal, boring, boring. <laughs> as this show goes on, as the season goes on, it does start to form better. And The Third Man is one of the better episodes for that. I got to point out a correction here that Andra uh, pointed out. Grandpa was a Campbell, Mary's father, not Winchester, who the we meet in the latter season. Samuel Campbell, Sam was named after Dean, not after him. And Dean was named after after Mary's mother, who was also a hunter named Deanna. I did not actually know that, so thank you for pointing that out, Andra. After two slow episodes, the season finally gets it back on track. It feels like earlier seasons, the boys playing feds, Return of the Angels, the debate on whether there was something wrong with Sam, the ever lingering questions over one of the brothers' experiences in hell. While this wasn't Endland's most memorable episode, this was his trademark goriness, as well as some awesome one-liners. Such a good episode, six out of seven. I, it actually is quite nice to see him in this episode. I am kind of curious of when he stops kind of contributing, but I think that wasn't until like season 10. So correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, yet another boring episode. Yes, Balthazar is in it, but so what? It wastes the premise of the angelic civil war in favor of some more weird monsters. And that is the problem with Sarah Gamble. She just wants weird monsters doing weird things, like the magicians. I, I would guess that's the show. I'm sorry, but for once, I actually agree with Robert Singer. Weird monsters is not enough for the show after it tackled the apocalypse. Aside from Balthazar, the only notable thing about this episode is that Jill Valentine is in it. No joke. Sam Hooker is the original model they used for Jill Valentine in the Resident Evil games. The more you know, I guess. 
thought that you were meaning about the Jill Valentine in the Resident Evil movies, not the model from the video games. That's awesome. I did not know that. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you guys for your comments. And now we've got Weekend at Bobby's. This is the first episode that Jensen Ackles would ever direct for the show. And if the production style of it was correct to me, this was actually the first episode they shot. That was what happened with all of the other episodes that Jensen ever shot. His episodes would usually take priority because he was new to it and they wanted to give him as much effort as he could, which kind of actually does explain why the first episode is so middling because a lot of effort was put into this episode. So give me your guys' comments about that episode and I'll read those off in the next review. And the other thing that I was gonna make a comment about since 2011 didn't really have the want for a ton of JPEGs to be over a thousand. A lot of these photos are from IMDb that which are only 500 by whatever so they're not the greatest of quality so I am going to try and figure out a means in which to combat this because I fear that just from a visual perspective, I'm already kind of boring enough as it is. I don't want to bore you guys and groan you all with really grainy images. So I'm going to try and figure out how to go about that. Anyways, that's all for me, guys. I'll see you for the next one.